For many travelers on Route 66 who were California bound out of necessity or for pleasure, a rest stop after crossing the high desert was a much needed relief. The city of San Bernardino was the entry point into the Los Angeles basin, and Route 66 created a thriving environment for business. My name is Irene Montaño, and I'm the daughter-in-law of uh, Lucia Rodriguez, who was the original owner of Mila Cafe. Lucia didn't have a formal education. She um, came from Mexico with her husband. She had her children. She didn't speak English, but she could tally up totals of math in her head like nobody's business. Her, her husband was working at Santa Fe at the railroad, and she started the Mitla. She was here at 4 o'clock in the morning working. I think that, and I think at that time they opened 24 hours a day. Route 66 really propelled this already growing and developing Mexican community and made it a much more diverse community in that it allowed Mexican-Americans to become merchants. My grandmother was a very strong lady, and because she knew what it was to go out without food for several days, that she didn't want her children going through that. And therefore, she was going to open a restaurant and make sure that the kids were fed whenever they wanted to eat. She brought her daughters to work with her and to help her. So it was all women. And um, my mother, Vera, um, only had an eighth grade education. But she, I think, followed in my grandmother's footsteps where she was an entrepreneur. She knew how to run the business. She knew books. She knew money. She, she, and she was very, very good at it. San Bernardino was typical of other Southwestern communities at the time. There was segregation within schools for Mexican children, segregation within public recreational spaces. The Mila Cafe promoted community identity, especially one that was Mexican, one that was uh, ethnic, one that was stilling pride into the residents of these neighborhoods. Not only that, it was also an inter-ethnic space in that white patrons were coming in and introducing themselves to Mexican culture, Mexican food, uh, and Mexican people as well. So it was this space that challenged segregationist practices. In the 1950s, Glenn Bell uh, had a little stand across the street from here, and he used to come in and have tacos, and he, he really liked them, and he wanted to know how they were made. So my father-in-law, accommodated him and took him in the back. When I started working, I would see him come in for breakfast before he went to his little hot dog stand. Lucia, she taught you how to do it, and she expected you to do it the way she taught you. If that's the right way to do it. So a little after that, he um, moved away from there. He sold his little hot dog stand and he went to uh, start his Taco Bell empire, I guess you'd call it. <laughs>